Hey. hey. How's it going, my friends? Ryan Van Duzer here. So I was recently going through all the photos on my phone and I began thinking to myself, Ryan, you've been to a lot of beautiful places. You should make a video about your top 10 most beautiful places. And so that's exactly what I've done. I went through my old hard drives and I tried to pick out the 10 most beautiful places that these eyeballs have ever seen. When I was younger, I never would have imagined being able to go to a fraction of these places. But dreams come true, and I turned this into my career, and I'm incredibly grateful for all the experiences that I've had, and all the people that I have met, and all the places that I've been, and all the beautiful places that I will go someday in the future. I'm feeling very, very fortunate right now, and it makes me happy to be able to share these experiences with you in hopes that maybe it inspires you in some way. This is just so epic. Epic beyond belief. And there's a lot of factors that go into beauty. It's not just the landscape, but it's the people and the culture and the weather and how I'm feeling internally. And you mix all that together and that to me is what creates a beautiful moment. So I really hope you enjoy this compilation. Please subscribe. And if you have the ability, please join my Patreon. That is how I keep my channel funded and chugging along and creating new content for you. So without further ado, let's get into it. First up is Nepal. I absolutely love Nepal. And I've been very fortunate to have visited this country three different times. And my favorite thing to do in Nepal is obviously treks in the Himalayas. What's your name? My name is Tenzin Chopal Sherpa. My name is Nuru Tendup Sherpa. <laughs> and the images that you're seeing right now are from the Three Passes trek in the Everest region. And as you can see, these mountains are absolutely huge. They're mind boggling. I'm from Colorado and we have nice mountains, but the mountains in Nepal are next level. I'm like overwhelmed right now with emotion. I'll never forget this moment. For the rest of my life, I'll always think back to this being like one of my very happy places. Sitting here all alone, perfect temperature, admiring the beauty of planet Earth all around me. Now let's go to another one of my favorite mountainous countries, and that is Peru. And specifically here, the Machu Picchu Trek. And this is something that I did with my mom and my brother. And this was my mom's first big adventure of her life. And it was a very emotional voyage for all of us together to be witnessing this as a family. <laughs> oh, no. Here they are. It's gonna be a cold night tonight. We're close to 14,000 feet. It's already snowed. The tents are all frozen. My mom had been training for this adventure for many, many months, and this was really hard for her. And my brother and I were by her side every step of the way. And once we got to Machu Picchu, wow! I mean, it's one of the seven wonders of the world for a very good reason. Come on, Mom! I feel very fortunate that this next place is pretty close to home. It's about eight hours away from Boulder, Moab, Utah. I love this spot. I've been coming here since college to ride my mountain bike, and it's one of those places where you feel like you've been transported to Mars. Everything is red, the rock formations are crazy, the canyons are mind-blowing, 
and it just is a great place to pedal. Yes! Woo! I love you, planet Earth! <laughs> What you're looking at here specifically is the White Rim Trail in Canyonlands National Park. It's a hundred mile route and it takes a long time to do it. The beauty is just so distracting that I just sometimes forget to pedal my bike. It's just, it's unbelievable. It's, you don't see this very often. There aren't many places on the planet that have views like this and it just takes your breath away and it just kind of makes you dream about things. Like, wow, if that's possible on planet Earth, what else is possible? Now we're going down south to Central America, specifically Guatemala. I love this country. It's tiny, but it packs a punch. And one of my favorite activities to do in Guatemala is to climb volcanoes. These things are massive, and the view from the top is always mind-blowing. Feels like a bomb is going off, the earth shakes, and it shoots out all these rocks. <laughs> and they didn't land too far from where we are. Every one of these places on my list gets me very excited, but especially this one, the Copper Canyons of Northern Mexico. And I found out about this place after reading the book born to run and I came down here to run the Caballo Blanco race and from that point on I have been hooked. These trails are ancient trails the Tarumara have been using for a long long time to get to work or school or the market so it feels cool to be following the, in the footsteps of the Tarumara. And it's one of those places that I plan on visiting and coming back to for the rest of my life. And it's not just the beautiful canyons, but it's the people. I feel like whenever I go here, I feel like I'm going home. Now I'm gonna take you a little bit to the west of the Copper Canyons to a place called the Baja Peninsula. And I could easily make a top 10 video just about Baja but I'm gonna focus in on one spot in particular, and it's called the Seven Sisters Surf Break. It's in the northern part of Baja, and it's a difficult place to get to. The highway is nowhere close to this area. And I got here by riding my bike, and it took a long time to get here, but it was totally worth it. And it was one of those days where I just pushed myself to the absolute limit, I was exhausted, and then I found the most perfect campsite of my entire life. This is gonna be a good one. This is exactly where I wanted to be, right here. When I had this whole thing envisioned, this is, this is it. These are the moments in life where all the hard work pays off. All the waking up early in the pedaling and uh, just suffering through a hot day, bam, right here, this is it. Now we're gonna flip to the other side of Mexico, to the Yucatan Peninsula, and jump in some cenotes. And this is one of my absolute favorite activities to do in this area. I know that it's really famous for beaches, but I don't care about the beaches. I love the cenotes. Right now, I'm looking up like a window into the jungle, and I have a view of just pure green foliage. And there's thousands of these limestone sinkholes all over this area. And they were very sacred to the Mayan people for very good reason. This next one is really interesting. It's a place that only appears one time a year for seven days in the Black Rock Desert outside of Reno, Nevada. It's called Burning Man. And about 70,000 people from all over the world converge on this area to create a temporary city. 
It's a fascinating place that is not a traditional economy. Money is not exchanged for things. You essentially go to Burning Man bringing a gift to the community, and that gift can be whatever you want it to be. We are Coconuts Without Borders. We travel to desert places and give out coconuts to people who need coconuts. <laughs> Within minutes, we have a huge crowd of people just loving the coconuts. I've been to Burning Man six times, and I have a smile on my face the entire week. It is bizarre and funny and thought-provoking and inspiring, and it's one of those places when I come home, it's kind of hard to explain to my friends. It's just one of those places you have to go to experience. Since I talked about the Copper Canyons earlier, I think it's only fair that I talk about the Grand Canyon. And I've only been here once, but it was a really powerful experience. My buddy Matthew and I ran from one side to the other and back. <laughs> this is pure joy. It doesn't get much better than this. It was a very, very difficult run, but along the way, we were treated to some of the most beautiful vistas we'd ever seen in our lives. It's hard to explain the scale of the Grand Canyon without being there. It is just huge. This is a kind of a sketchy part here because you're running along and you realize right here, ah, cliff. All right, my friends, this is number 10 and it's a good one. We are in Nicaragua now, specifically the island of Ometepe in Lake Nicaragua. And I went down here with one of my buddies, Isaac, to climb a volcano, Volcan Concepcion. And this was a huge deal for Isaac because 15 years ago, he had a horrible skydiving accident and was told that he would never walk again. We have shit in our lives that we don't think is possible. Everybody does. Mine just happens to be physical. But yeah, what are the things that we tell ourselves we can't do that we actually can? Like, what do we think we can and can't do? The problem is, is that in order to know what our limits are, we have to fail. And this very grueling hike was his first big adventure since his accident long ago. And it was one of those moments where I was just overwhelmed with joy watching my friend Isaac accomplish something that he never thought he would be able to do. We made it. Yeah, I didn't think I could do this. I went into it fully expecting to have to chill out somewhere and wait for you guys. And now we made it. It's crazy when you actually do something that you think you can't do. You gotta wonder how much other shit in life we're getting in the way of ourselves of. So there you have it, my friends, the top 10 most beautiful places on the planet, according to this guy. And as I watch all this footage, I think, damn, Mother Nature, you got it going on. This planet is incredible. And I feel so fortunate to have had these experiences. And now I know for the next couple weeks, I have all this imagery in my head. I'm going to have some really fun dreams. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. And if you have the ability, please join my Patreon. I will link down below all of the videos that were highlighted in this compilation. And we will see you down the road.